When Evander Holyfield is at it, he's on his toes, okay. moving from side to side, lateral movement, keeping out of harm's way. Offensively, for Holyfield to be his most effective, he must outquick Bo, as he did with the bigger, slower George Foreman a year and a half ago. But where Holyfield can get himself into trouble is when his lateral movement disappears. He then becomes a stationary fighter who attempts to exchange punch for punch with his opponent, and it can cost him. Because Holyfield is giving away power and weight to Bo. And he can't afford to have the pace of the fight dictated by the challenger, as was the case with Larry Holmes. Now here's Al with the ways and means Holyfield can best succeed against Bo on Friday night. Thank you, Charlie. You know, Evander Holyfield will have to have a very specific plan if he's to beat Riddick Bowe. And we will show you what he'll have to do in the ring to retain his title. Helping me out with this demonstration is Kirk Daly, undefeated junior middleweight. He'll be Evander Holyfield, and I'll be Riddick Bowe. Now, Holyfield has told us that he's going to box and move for the first couple rounds against Bowe. But when he gets down from his moving and decides to attack, he'll have to get inside on Bowe and land the left hook to the head, and then in some instances, double with the left hook to the body and the head. And a very important punch for Holyfield, maybe the most important of the fight, will be the right uppercut on the inside, which he hopes to use to split Bo's defense. The reason he can land these punches is that Bo, despite his height, tends to lean in against opponents. And for Holyfield, he'll need to make that work to his advantage. For Riddick Bo, he must put his height, weight, and reach advantage to work. But one of his most potent weapons is the left hook. And then it's just a matter of cleaning up the odds and ends. In Bo's last fight, despite his split boxer shorts, he was especially effective inside, which then allowed him to finish off Pierre Coetzer from the outside. But Bo's haymaker, the overhand right, the one he calls the African soup bone, is the punch that the shorter Holyfield must avoid or all this pre-fight strategy becomes null and void. And so too will Holyfield. And Charlie, that right hand can be delivered in a couple of different ways by Riddick Bowe. Again, Kirk will be Evander Holyfield. I will be Riddick Bowe this time on the attack. First of all, Bowe can use his excellent left jab to get the right hand home over the left of Holyfield. Or Holyfield may throw a lazy left jab out, and then Bowe, with his long reach, will land a big, powerful overhand right. This is an important weapon for Riddick Bowe, and it will give us a clue early in the fight. If he lands it and gets Holyfield out of there, of course, Bowe will be the new champion. But if Evander Holyfield can get through the power of that right hand in the early stages of this fight, it could be a long night for Riddick Bowe. Well, you are looking now at the heavyweight champion of the world and his challenger, Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bowe, joining us live here just 48 hours before fight night. Let me start the questioning with you, Mr. Champion. The conventional wisdom around this town is that Riddick Bowe is going to come out fast and try to take you out early. You would probably then have an advantage if the fight goes into the later rounds. It, are you expecting Riddick Bowe to come out with a fury? Well, I don't know. Um, um, I think he'll come out and use a jab. But if he do uh, come out with a blistering pace, I'm equipped to handle him. So you think uh, there is a possibility at any rate that this thing could start at like a house of fire right off the bat? Well, you know, boxing, anything can happen. And, uh, and I'm, I'm ready for the unexpected. Riddick, a lot of people are talking about your right hand and the power that you have. But um, it's possible that people are misjudging the full uh, totality of your arsenal. They talk a lot about all of the punches Evander has. Do you think there are other punches that will trouble Evander as well as the powerful right? Oh, very much so. Not, all, not only the right hand, but the jab and various other mm -hmm. punches. I'm not going to, you know, give away any secrets. Mm -hmm. But um, come fight night, he's going to have his hand full. There is some talk, of course, uh, Riddick, that uh, you certainly have the knockout punch, um, but there is some question about your vulnerability as a defensive fighter. And, of course, you come in at 235 and you're 30 pounds heavier. Are you concerned about the quickness of Evander Holyfield? Oh, not, not at all. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do things, but as though that quickness he has ain't going to be a big factor at all. What, without giving us uh, everything, what do you uh, expect to be doing? Well, if I tell you that, then you know more than me. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll know, too. Evander, you, uh, when talking about this quickness, you, you come in at 205, which is a weight that it would seem is very beneficial for you in some ways because uh, uh, you want to be quick against Riddick Bowe. Lessening the weight training, uh, when did you get it in your mind that it was a good idea to do that so you'll be quicker for Riddick Bowe? When I started that uh, before the camp even started, 
I realized and I look back at my other tapes when I mm -hmm. fought George Foreman, when I fought Larry Holmes, where that um, I got to the point that I really just wanted to slug and I wanted to really get a guy out with one shot uh, instead of putting the punches together that I, the way I did in, in my early career. And that might not work against him. Well, not to the point that it won't work. <laughs> it's the point is that, you know, I got to do what I feel is best for me. This is the final face-to-face -face meeting between Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bowe before they set foot into the ring at the Thomas and Mack Center on Friday night. And we'll continue our discussion with the champion and the challenger. And the bombs are going to be bursting in air in the Thomas and Mack Center on Friday the 13th. We'll be back in just a minute. On November 13th, Budweiser will make the world rumble, rattle, and roll when two of the most devastating powers on Earth collide. Evander Holyfield, Riddick Bowe, live on pay-per-view from the Mirage. Only one will walk away, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Brought to you by the King of Beers. This Sports Center special, Holyfield versus Bo, is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that fresh, pure, natural taste, nothing beats a Bud. And we are live at the Mirage here in Las Vegas, and just a couple of nights away from the heavyweight championship of the world. As we went to commercial, Riddick, you were watching uh, the Burt Cooper fight, and uh, you were not terribly impressed with what you saw of Evander Holyfield. No, he was throwing wide shots, and... Um you can pretty much dictate what he was going to do. And I was telling him, you know, he's not going to hit with anything like that come Friday night. But if he does, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I'll make him pay. Equal time. Well, I was just telling him that, you know, how big he is, I can close my eyes and still hit him. <laughs> He'll be there. <laughs> Evander, you, you know, even listening to you guys talk uh, just a little bit ago, this is signs of respect. And part of the, the charm of this fight, I think, also, is that uh, you have two real good athletes who are also good guys. Do you sense that? Do you sense people responding to that, that they don't always respond just to the circus atmosphere? Well, I think, I think people pick up and realize that the two best guys are fighting. You know, I, can't, I never try to bring my opponent down to make myself feel bigger because, you know, I look at, you know, Reddick, he do have a lot of talent, you know, good jab, good power, but all that together, who don't at this level, it's not good. I'm like, we both have skills. It's determination the factor. Riddick, I was told that you weighed as much as 272 pounds back on the 28th of September when camp started, negative 235, and uh, so the, I guess, basic mathematics is something like 37 pounds in 44 days, and I know it's, uh, as you call it, maggot juice that uh, Dick Gregory was feeding you. I guess the question is, did you, do you feel like you may have taken off too many pounds too quickly? Oh, not at all. I, I trained for eight weeks. I'm in great shape. You know, I've been looking forward to this. And um, I know that Ivana presents a, a good talent for myself. And uh, I think that night you will see the best of him and the best of myself. Ivana, some people um, quest have questioned your hunger in the last year or so. But it seems like you've uh, refocused yourself because this man represents a, a good challenge. And you're thinking now about a couple more fights before you retire. Are you as hungry right now as you need to be? Well, yes. Yeah, so, you know, I wouldn't stay in the game if I wasn't going to give 100%. And I'm... Um, you know, when, you, when I look at the different individuals, I can't make them no bigger than what they are. You know, uh, Bo do pose a bigger threat than a guy like George Foreman, Larry Holmes. Mm -hmm. I realized that. I realized that I had to be at my best. I felt that I had to be at my best with them. But it's easy to be motivated because you're fighting a stiffer competition. Well, this is the last time these two fellas are going to be meeting uh, one another until Friday night. So good luck to the both of you, and uh, we'll see you on Friday night. Vander Holyfield and Riddick Bowe joining us live tonight here in Las Vegas. And we, when we come back, we're going to take a look at Vander Holyfield, the heavyweight champion. Now two years into his reign, is the hunger still there, the desire to excel, still to be champion after lo these many years? When we come back, some answers. The Thomas and Mack Center, home of the running Reds of UNLV, the site of the heavyweight championship fight this Friday night. You know, Vander Holyfield has been the heavyweight champion now for two years and one month. He's financially set, rich beyond his wildest dreams, but he's also the father of four now, and there are different priorities in his life. 
Does Evander Holyfield still have the desire to be the champion? What with the change in priorities as he grows older? Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Evander Holyfield hit the big 3-0 last month. And this Friday night, he aims to hit Riddick Bowe about the head and body a lot. This will be Holyfield's fourth title defense in his two-year reign as champion. Bowe is his youngest opponent and the one that's expected to provide the stiffest challenge. Holyfield is still searching, though, for that one performance that will dazzle the boxing public. I would like the next day somebody to say to me, hey, that was some fight last night. Boy, your guy's got to be given a lot of credit. He really fought But back. it hasn't happened yet. Absolutely right. Surprisingly, since becoming a heavyweight four years ago, Holyfield has had ten fights, and he's knocked out the other guy eight times. But the decisions to baby boomers George Foreman and Larry Holmes have left a lasting impression. At one point in time, I thought that I wanted to knock you out the win. It's not to the point where I wanted to outpoint you. Now I'm at a thing where, hey, I'm the champ. You got to take it from me. I, I, I point you. I ain't got to knock you out. Holyfield, the father of four kids, is at the point in his life now where it's tough for him to be away from home. But he realizes it is an occupational hazard. To be good in something doesn't mean that you have to put all your time in. So I realize to be a good parent, that I need to be home. But it's hard to be good in two things. <laughs> I never seen him as intense and, you know, as concentrated as he's been in the last three, four weeks. Holyfield is still the robo heavyweight, but he has cut down on his high-tech training, virtually eliminating the weightlifting for the more rudimentary boxing preparation. I'm not taking anything away from this new concept. I don't want to take anything away from that new concept, but I see that sometimes he's you know, he's a little tired, or maybe he slows down a little bit, you know. But I think more road work and more boxing, because this is what you have to do. I realize when I do hit the weight, it, it tends to take away a lot of my boxing ability, because I get to the point where I really want to knock somebody out. I want to throw one punch at a time. And if I get to a fight where I'm throwing one punch at a time with Reddick, then pretty much an even fight then. Evander Holyfield is finally picking on someone his own age. Actually, Bo is five years his junior, but 25 pounds heavier. Once again, Holyfield is out to prove something. And after spending two-thirds of his life in the ring as a boxer, he should be used to it by now. You think that after 21 years, I've been improved myself? No, each and every time in the fight, you have to always prove yourself that, hey, I'm good. So the big story for Evander Holyfield and his training regimen was cutting down on the weights and back to the more rudimentary skills. Well, in this political year, uh, it's uh, fashionable to say people have reinvented themselves. That's what Evander Holyfield has done for this match. He has gotten back to not only the physical things that made him a special heavyweight, the quickness and the combinations, but also mentally the hunger that he had. He understands there's a big challenge ahead of him Friday night. In the case of Evander Holyfield, it was time for a change. And for a change, we'll come back with our predictions and analysis, including Al's artwork on the Telestrator, as our live special on Holyfield Bow continues in a minute. We are live at the Mirage. The heavyweight championship of the world is no Mirage at all. They'll be going for it on Friday night at the Thomas and Max Center. Now it's time for some X's and O's, and let's go to the analysis, if you will, with the master of the boxing <laughs> telestrator, Al Bernstein. Al? Something a little different, Charlie. We, for the first time, decided that uh, the telestrator must have its day in boxing, so we're <laughs> going to take a look at it. First, we're going to take a look at a little bit what uh, Evander Holyfield, or Riddick Bowe, excuse me, needs to do. He will want to land the big right hand early, as he did here against Pierre Coulter. It will start with the jab. He has an excellent jab. Then the big right hand will follow behind it, and the way both fights lately, the left hook should come behind that. He says, I can finish with these, these big, big punches, not like the old guys, Foreman and Holmes, that Holyfield has been facing. He's the victory for him. The right hand, it must come early for Riddick Bowe. In his defensive posture, must keep the right hand up because the double left hook will be coming from Holyfield. He's got to establish that jab early and don't leave it out there because even though Holyfield isn't known for it, he can land the right hand over the jab of Riddick Bowe. 
When you take a look at Evander Holyfield, here against George Foreman, you will see what he did very well and wants to do against Bo. The double left hook is an important weapon for him. First, he will land it there to the body, then quickly must move it up to the head. This all has to be very fast for Evander Holyfield, especially against Riddick Bo, but he has the hand speed now at 205 to execute this maneuver. Now, the right hand of Holyfield is not his most devastating weapon, but should Riddick Bo leave his left jab out there and let it languish there, Holyfield can land it as he did here against Buster Douglas. In fact, it was the punch that got him the title. Douglas jabs, but leaves that left hand low, and Holyfield, more than happy to oblige, comes with the overhand right. Ultimately, it was a punch like this that knocked Buster Douglas out and got Holyfield the championship. The key is for Holyfield, Early on, he wants to box for the first three or four rounds, Charlie. Then he wants to move inside after he feels Bo may have slowed down a bit. Use his uppercut, which is his best punch, and those double left hooks we saw, and he must throw them on the inside. Most of his movement, I think, should come to the right, because he wants to stay away from the big right hand of Riddick Bo. And that movement, a real key for him. That's why he came in at 205 pounds. It is time now for our moment of truth with just a couple of million of our close personal <laughs> friends. Who do you like? I'll tell you what, you made the point that this is a very difficult fight to predict, and most everybody that's predicting has a very difficult time doing so. I think this is absolutely a pick'em fight. I think that uh, uh, Riddick Bowe is going to get there with the right hand early in the first three rounds, but in my opinion, Holyfield will probably survive that, and if he does, and I think he probably will, he'll probably win by a decision in the fight, or if he's lucky, if he's very lucky, will win by a TKO later, but I think the fight will probably go the distance. I see Evander Holyfield winning a decision. I see this fight as a three-part harmony. In the first four rounds, Bo will have to come out strong and powerful, and if he can connect, then perhaps he can dictate the fight and build up confidence in the crowd. Second uh, set of four rounds, that's where Holyfield might be able to establish the momentum of the fight, and if it goes to the final four rounds, as I su suspect that it probably will, it will be Holyfield winning it more than likely in a decision. Al and I will be back with some final thoughts in just a moment. But a reminder, Sports Center is coming up in just a minute. And then on Friday night, right after the fight, this is the place to be. Al and I and Lennox Lewis and a cast of thousands with analysis of the Holyfield Bow Heavyweight Championship of the World. This Sports Center special, Holyfield versus Bo, is brought to you by First Brands Corporation, makers of Prestone Advanced Formula Antifreeze. At last check, Evander Holyfield is still a 7 to 5 favorite for Friday night's fight with Riddick Bo. That's going to do it for us from the Mirage. For Al Bernstein, I'm Charlie Steiner. Sports Center is next.